Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to replace the upper control arms for the rear suspension on a Volvo C30. This is a 2007 model, and the same procedure can also be used on the Volvo S40, V50, and C70 models of the same generation. This video is sponsored by Auto Parts Way. They have supplied me with the control arms in order to produce this video. A link to these control arms will be included in the description below. Worn control arm bushings will cause excessive inner tire wear, and when inspecting the bushings, you'll notice the rubber deterioration, such as cracking. This car currently has 140,000 kilometers, and as far as I know, these are the original control arms. First start by safely elevating the rear of the vehicle, and remove the wheel. Place the jack stand under the subframe. The upper control arm is only held in with two 15mm bolts. On the one side will be a fuel filler neck. There is a module which is held in place with three T25 Torx screws. I use an Allen wrench type Torx driver. You'll need to bend the bracket slightly to access the bolt. Once it is bent, I left it the way it was and a Torx screwdriver or a ratchet can be used. In order to access that bolt, you'll need a 5 inch and 10 inch extension with a socket and a half inch drive ratchet. Here you can see my current setup. This bracket can be bent out towards the wheel and you can slip the socket in behind the bracket. The module has been pushed up, so the extension runs underneath it. Gloves are recommended as there is many sharp components, such as the heat shields and some suspension components. I'm not sure if all C30 models are like this, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Don't remove the upper bolt just yet, as there is still tension on the control arm. Remove the bolt at the wheel carrier first. Using a 15mm socket and a ratchet, remove the bolt. The rubber flex line for the brakes is also held on that same bolt. If you are finding the bolt is binding, there is thread locker installed from factory. You can work the bolt back and forth to break it loose. Penetrating oil can also be used here. Push the wheel carrier in, then remove the bolt by hand and the wheel carrier will spring back slightly. Finally, you can remove the upper bolt on the subframe and then pull the control arm out. Comparing the old and new control arms, both the left and right sides are the same, just ensure the positions that it's mounted is correct. As mentioned earlier, Auto Parts Way has supplied me with the control arms required for the replacement, and a link to these will be included in the description below. While it's a bit hard to see on camera, the control arms are starting to show their age by the cracked rubber bushings. Clean up the bolts using a wire brush to remove any rust, dirt, or old thread locker. If penetrating oil was used, wash the bolts with brake cleaner, along with the welded nuts on the vehicle. Then apply medium grade thread locker. Install the new control arms. It's best to start with the rear bolt first. Run the bolt in, but don't tighten it just yet, as it needs to move freely when connecting the other side to the wheel carrier. Next is pushing the wheel carrier into place. You might be able to do this with someone helping you. Instead, I jacked up the car higher, then placed a jack stand under the rear mounting point on the rear lower control arm, and then lowered the vehicle to compress the suspension using the vehicle's weight. Install the bolt with the flex line bracket into place, don't tighten it just yet. These bushings need to be preloaded, so the suspension needs to have the vehicle's weight on, otherwise the bushings can prematurely fail. With the wheels on, you don't necessarily have enough room to get a ratchet or wrench in there to tighten up the bolts on the wheel carrier. Jacking up the vehicle, then placing a jack stand under the rear mounting point on the rear lower control arm, just like I had before, this will help compress the suspension when the jack is lowered. Considering I do have to go under the car, I'm also using an additional jack stand under the subframe as a safety. There is a slight space, so I know the weight of the vehicle is on the control arm instead. Tighten the bolts. The torque specifications for the 15mm bolts are 57 to 75 foot-pounds or 76 to 102 newton meters. You'll need to go under the car to tighten the bolt on the subframe side. As you can see, here is the extension I used to access that upper bolt. Reinstall the module with the three Torx screws. As mentioned earlier, after the bracket has been bent, you can then gain access using a screwdriver or ratchet. Reinstall the wheel. The torque specifications for the lug nuts are 80 foot-pounds or 108 newton meters. Moving on to the opposite side, again jacking up the vehicle safely and then removing the wheel. Place a jack stand under the subframe. 
Loosen the outer bolt using a half inch drive ratchet with a 15 millimeter socket. Push it in at the top of the rotor to reduce the tension and then remove the bolt. Remove the inner bolt off the subframe again using a half inch drive ratchet with a 15 millimeter socket. No need for an extension here, you can gain direct access to it. You may need to finish up with a wrench after the ratchet as you won't have enough room for the movement. Finally remove the bolt and lift out the control arm. Clean up the threads on the bolts using a wire brush and apply medium grade thread locker. Install the upper bolt and control arm, don't tighten it just yet. Jack up the car, place a jack stand under the rear lower control arm mounting point, then lower the car to compress the suspension. Install the bolt. Just to give you a view of what the current setup is between the jack stands. The vehicle needs to be on its own weight to preload the bushings. Place the jack stand under the rear lower control arm pivot point. Tighten the bolts. The torque specifications for those 15 millimeter bolts is 57 to 75 foot pounds or 76 to 102 newton meters. Reinstall the wheel. The torque specifications for the lug nuts are 80 foot pounds or 108 newton meters. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.